Welcome back. So what we're going to do today is actually we're going to go over a practice we've done at class. Um, the practice is to test the effect of increased temperature, change in pH, and change in substrate concentration on the activity of a named enzyme. So the enzyme I chose, you might have done a different enzyme in class, but it doesn't really matter. But the enzyme I chose is the enzyme renin. And what renin does, it is an enzyme which turns liquid milk, so normal milk, into clumpy milk. Um, so we can see if the, en the enzyme is active by seeing if the, if the milk turns into clumpy milk. If it turns into clumpy milk, that means it's a, uh, the enzyme is present and active. So we would have tested for temperature, pH, and substrate concentration. What I'll do first is I'll go over temperature. So this would have some of you would have done something quite similar in class. You would have had six different test tubes. In three test tubes, you would have had only the substrate. So S for substrate. And the other three would have had your enzyme plus substrate. And the reason why we have substrate, only substrate, is because we want to see what happens if we have no enzyme present. Right? But we predict that if we have no enzyme present, that nothing would happen because we need to have an enzyme to make chemical reactions occur. They occur by themselves, but they take a long time. So we need enzymes present for that to happen. So we have all these only substrate ones. We expect nothing to happen, and nothing does happen because enzymes need to be present to make that happen. Right? Also, what's important is we, if we, because we're testing temperature, we're actually going to keep our pH the same. So seven for all, we're only changing the temperature. Because what could happen if we change the pH and the temperature, if we observe an effect anywhere, if we observe a change, we wouldn't be able to know if that's the temperature that that made that happen or if that is the pH that made that happen. So if we change, if we change only the temperature, but we don't change the pH, we can make sure that if a change does happen. The change can, is definitely due to the temperature being changed uh, because it has nothing to do with the pH because the pH is kept constant. Right? So with these ones, we keep the, the pH constant, but we change the temperature. And we have it from we have it all of the test tubes. We have either 10, 35 degrees Celsius, or 50 degrees Celsius. And with renin, it works best at about 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. So will we expect something to happen if it's way below 37 or way above 50? Um, the answer for that is no. So if it's below 35, nothing would happen. If it's well above 35, not much would happen either. So the optimum function for renin is at a 35 degrees. So if we have a graph, it would look something like this. The activity is on here, the activity, and the temp on the other side. And this is roughly here is about 37 or 35. And we get this bell shape. Again, that's the optimum. Uh, that is a bad drawing. Um, that's the optimum here. And that means it works best at this 35 to 37 area here. And if we go too low, so to about 10 would be here, we can see it works a lot, a lot worse. And the same thing happens if we go too high, to about 50, which would be somewhere around here. And obviously, the graph is badly drawn, but usually it should be even lower. But you can see, uh, like you can still get the gist of it, like the actual activity drops. So most of the, the milk changes from normal liquidy to clumpy at 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. And the reason why is because this renin works best at that temperature. Okay? So the next thing we would have looked at would have been um, pH. Right? So pH is obviously how acidic something is. Um, we would have this time we've kept the temperature the same, right? Because we're not checking for temperature, we don't want to have this change our results, so we keep this the same. We have the same setup, three test tubes with only substrates, three test tubes with enzyme plus substrates, and we're changing the pH. We have three, which is very acidic, seven, which is neutral, and ten, which is uh, basic. So are we expecting anything to happen if we have substrate only? Again, uh, probably not, because we need to have an enzyme present to make stuff happen, so nothing should happen when it's substrate only. Will we expect something to happen when there's an enzyme plus substrate? Yes, most likely, but we have to find the optimum pH. So the optimum pH for in the case of um, renin is actually around about 7. So will we expect too much to happen when it comes to a pH of 3, which is quite acidic? Probably not. And again, when it comes to pH of 10, if it's optimum pH is about 7, Probably not as well. So again, the optimum pH would be about 7. So what we'll have, the graph will look something like this, where you would have pH on the one side, activity on the other side, and 7 would be about here, 
and you'd find that its optimum function, the, the, the place where it works the best, the place where it's not denatured, is around about 7. Right? So it works best at around about 7. Um, so last but not least, you would have also checked for concentration. Before I go into concentration, I want to make sure we all know what concentration was. So here we have two test tubes. They're meant to have exactly the same amount of water, right? So this one actually looks like it has um, yeah, equal amounts of water, but here these blue dots are the substrate. So in test beaker number one, we have two of these um, substrate molecules, whereas in this one we have the same amount of water, but we have maybe 10 or 12 of these substrate molecules. So this one has a much higher concentration. So same amount of water, but many more substrates in, in that small amount of water compared to the other one. So concentration refers to how many substrates there are in the same amount of water. So if we're testing for concentration, which we've done in, in the prac, you would have looked at one thing, which is just concentration. So we first we keep the actual temperature the same, 35 degrees Celsius, at all of them. We keep the pH the same as well. All right, so 7 pH, don't change it, keep that constant. The only thing we're changing when we're testing concentration is the concentration itself. Um, again, when we have substrate only, will we expect anything to happen? Probably not, because we need to have an enzyme present to make it clumpy. It wouldn't go fast enough by itself. So then we have three different ones, um, and would we expect um, our activity of our enzymes to go up if we increase concentration? Well, it makes, I guess it makes sense, because I mean, their purpose of an enzyme is to break down these substrates, so if we have more of it, it should probably also go faster. But I'll explain much more in a second, but what actually happens is the one which has very little substrate goes very slowly, it increases as we increase concentration, but only to a certain point. Actually, these two, one has four, the other one has eight. These two will actually be at the same rate. And I'll explain why in a second. So this is interesting as well. Um, so stay tuned for that one. And hope you learned a bit from that. As I promised, I want to ex quickly explain why these two test tubes, that have one has more concentration than the other one, still give a similar, similar result in terms of enzyme activity, whereas the other one, which has very little, shows a different result. Um, so here I have the same test tube, so test tube 1, 2, and 3, one which had two substrates, the other one had four substrates, the other one had just had lots more substrates. Uh, so it's these ones, these strange looking things, are supposed to be uh, enzymes here, so we've got enzymes here, and the blue dots are our substrates. So in this case, we have four enzymes but two substrates. So these enzymes will be busy, they will be breaking down these two substrates, whereas these two have nothing to do. Right? So if we add some more, then we can keep these guys busy too, and we can increase the activity of these two. So next one, so over here, the same one as this one here, here we have four um, substrates and four enzymes. So we can keep them all busy, right? So we can have this guy eat, um, break down this one, this guy break down this one, this guy break down this one, and this guy break down this one. So now we have them all busy, they're all doing something, they're all active. But if we add even more, if we add even more substrates, as an example here, we have 10 substrates, but we only have four enzymes. So we can keep this guy busy here, this guy busy here, this guy busy here, and this guy busy here, but we have leftovers. So what it actually means is these two will have the same activity, because even though we have more concentration, there's no point in adding more concentration because they're already at their optimum activity. They can't work any more. Right? So actually what happens is as we increase our concentration, our activity increases, but only to a certain point. Right? So um, number one, which is this one here, might be down here. As we increase the concentration, we will keep going up. Number two might be test tube two, which is kind of here, where we have them all being working. But if we increase our concentration more, as we did with number three, which is this one, we won't be seeing an increase in activity because they're all already being occupied, right? So it's important to know that increasing a concentration will increase activity, but only to a certain point. After a while, it'll just plateau out.